Hey everyone, Richard here with this week's reading of Shard of the Sun. Uh, apologies for missing last Friday. Um, we took a short mini vacation and uh, the in-laws did not have internet, so um, I couldn't uh, upload a video. So uh, unfortunately, uh, we missed it, but uh, we're back this week, so <clears throat> we will pick up where we left off, uh, chapter 11. <clears throat> Justice led Broderick out of the building, pointing toward the nearest city gate. If you hurry, you should be out of the city before the goblins reach this point. And don't worry about the girl, Priest added, seeing the troubled look on Broderick's face. I will make sure she is safe. Broderick hesitated. <clears throat> he thought maybe he could convince her to come with him, but her angry words echoed in his mind. He shook Justice's hand and left, running through the empty streets. Apparently, the people took to hiding in their homes while the priests defended the city. He reached the gate without incident. His sword had been taken after he had brought Moral back to life, but Justice had given it to him before showing him the way out. The main problem he faced now was that his horse was on the other side of the city. <clears throat> he thought it unlikely he could reach it without being attacked, and so he continued on foot. He reached the road that led east and stopped. Looking back, he could see plumes of smoke rising from the city. Could it be the same goblins that attacked the farm? And if they were, why were they still following him? Roderick hoped nobody would get hurt. <clears throat> he looked away from Ravendell and considered his options. He had no idea where his cousin's wife was. The betrayal, he felt, stung him deeply. How could Kira have lied to him? He sighed. He could continue east, but he had no idea where to go. He also considered turning back and going home. But how could he explain to his cousin that he gave up the search? He couldn't bring himself to do that. As he decided to head east, he heard the sound of an approaching horse. Broderick looked toward the sound and saw a man clothed in black and hooded, riding a, a dark horse. The rider thundered toward him. Broderick stared at the figure. Something about the rider seemed familiar. As the man and his mount passed him on the road, the figure stared right back at Broderick. After they had passed, the man turned his head back and continued at a quick pace. Then it hit him. Back at his cousin's estate, when he was walking the fields, he thought he saw a man in black near the woods. It had to be the same person. Broderick took off running after the horse. Logically, he knew he couldn't, be, he couldn't catch up to the beast, but he, even, if the, even if the horse tired out soon, they were already out of sight. But now he had a plan. It couldn't have been a coincidence that the man in black had been sneaking around the estate the same night Octavia had been captured. Now he had just had to catch up to the man and trail him. <clears throat> Kira sat sullenly in her chair. She refused to believe she had come this far and failed. Well, she hadn't failed. Roderick had failed her. <clears throat> um, Rashan told her to forgive him. But he didn't know why she had killed her father. That was her fault. Instead of telling him the truth earlier, she had used him as an unwitting pawn in her scheme to bring down the barrier. And now the one thing she had gained was lost, all because of her stubbornness. And on top of everything else, goblins were now attacking the city. She could probably escape right now if she wanted to. But what was the point? Her father was still alive and... Wait. If she killed him once, she could do it again. And this time, her emotions wouldn't hinder her. She glanced furtively into the hall. She didn't see anyone. And her dagger... Ugh. She knew her dagger was in the was in the wooden chest across from her. She had seen Justice retrieve Broderick's sword from it and assumed her own weapon must be there as well. She stood up and walked over to it. It was open. Justice had left Broderick... had led Broderick out in a hurry and had probably forgotten. She looked inside. It was empty. She bit her lip in frustration and froze as strong hands grabbed her from behind, and she felt the cold metal of a blade press on her neck. Well, her father said, it looks like it's just the two of us. She shuddered in his grasp. Just kill me and get it over with, she spat angrily. Moral laughed. And why would I want to do that? You are much more valuable to me alive. For now, at least. Kira was confused. What do you want? she demanded, struggling to get out of his grasp. He was still so strong despite being so much older, and she failed to do anything other than nick her flesh on the blade. She could feel the blood drip down her neck. <clears throat> she swallowed hard and decided that struggling was useless. What do you want from me? She asked again, her tone reflecting the defeat she felt in her spirit. 
I knew you would come to see it my way, Morrill said. It is not what I want from you, but what you what I want from your friend. He carries something very powerful. Of that I am sure. I want it. Kira feigned ignorance. Friend? I have no friends. If you were talking about the man here earlier, the one who questioned me, I don't know him. Morrill's grip on her tightened. Don't play coy with me, he whispered dangerously. I'm not as gullible as you think. The chances of a man who can bring back the dead? And I was dead. Traveling with the necromancer is nothing short of miraculous, wouldn't you say? He pressed the dagger, her dagger, against her neck, harder. Want to try again? She ground her teeth and fresh. She ground her teeth. Mm. He had defeated her again. His name is Broderick, and he is a healer. I don't know much more than that. We traveled here together for different purposes, and I'm not the necromancer. I don't believe that. There hasn't been a real healer since the days of the priest Timothy. I've heard on, heard on good authority something fell from the sky, and not long after, word of a healer starts spreading through the towns. And I know you are the necromancer. All it took was a little investigation after hearing of a wizard who had white eyes. I have to say I'm impressed. I thought I blinded you, and yet here you are. And you even managed to kill me. He had actually blinded her. Mostly, anyway. She could only make out the blurred shapes then. She ran away and eventually learned the dark craft she practiced from an old crone of a woman. The demon Skiram had restored her sight, if not her irises. She would not give Moral any power over her than he already had, however. Kira didn't want him to know anything else about her. So what does this have to do with me? Moral turned her around to face him, but kept the blade ready to kill her if needed. I want you to get wherever he, whatever he has and bring it to me. Now it was Kira's turn to laugh. I don't even know where he is, and if I did, there's no way I would bring you anything. She spat on the ground. You will do it, or I will. And trust me when I say that you don't want me to fetch him. You'd never see him again. Her heart sunk at the threat. She knew her father well enough to know he would carry it out. If she went, he would live. She lowered her head in resignation. I'll do it, she said softly. Moral Gwyn grinned wickedly. All right. Short one. But thank you guys for listening and following along. And uh, we'll be back next week with another one. Thank you and see you guys.